So if you're a beer geek, you know that we're never supposed to drink anything from the vessel it comes in. You're always supposed to pour your beer into a, into a glass, the proper glassware, in order to let it breathe, let that aroma come up and greet your nose and be a major component of the uh, flavor that you enjoy about a beer. Now, this week I was talking to John Kimmich. He brews this beer. It's called Hetty Topper. It is a world-class double IPA. Now, it's strange for a beer of this caliber to come in a can, but it makes sense. It protects it from light. It protects it from leaking, etc. It's a great vessel to protect a beer. For me, the very weird part about this beer is it says right here along the top, drink from the can. Now, what John contends is that when you open a beer and you pour it into your glass, you're immediately introducing oxygen into the beer and it begins to degrade that very second. Whereas if you keep it in the can, there's a layer of carbon dioxide that stays on top of the beer, creating a barrier between the oxygen and the beer. So every time you tilt it, the beer slips out the side of that protective disc of carbon dioxide, you get your drink, you put the beer back down, it's protected again. While it's in a glass, it's just being brutalized by oxygen. So what John says is at the moment you pop the top of this can, oxygen starts wrecking this beer. Things are made a hundred times worse when you put it in this glass because it's no longer in the uh, can underneath the carbon dioxide to protect it. So I propose a test. I'm going to pour half of this beer from the can very gently into this glass. I'm going to let them sit for about an hour and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip of each and see how much different this beer is from the beer that's in this glass. So let's get going. This is a wonderful sound, but also the death of a beer. There we go. So I'm gonna pour it gently. Uh, there's a lot of floaties in this beer. There's a lot of proteins floating around in here. It's absolutely unfiltered and beautiful. So I'm going to pour it gently as I can into the glass, get about eight ounces in here. And what you'll see is a very pale, very beautiful beer. Now, the one thing I'll tell you right off the bat is you can smell this beer. Okay, the aromas are coming up, greeting you. There's, there's a little bit of piney hop to it, a little bit of fruitiness to it, um, a hint of malt. And this kind of has the same thing going, but it is not being chimmy to my nose the way that this one is. So let's take a sip right away and see what we think. That's a wonderful beer. Uh, nice gush of grapefruit, uh, tropical fruits, very subtle, very well balanced, very amazing. And the great thing is drinking out of the glass, the aroma greeted me. I started tasting this beer before it hit my lips. Now let's try it from the can. In some ways it's more intense. Uh, the, the hop profile I think is delivered uh, much more cleanly uh, and you don't have the aroma sort of giving it away and softening the blow of that, that hoppy hit. Um, so right now, they do taste kind of different in the can and in the glass. Both are very acceptable. This one's a little bit more of a sensual pleasure. Uh, this one is less, um, but at the same time, if it's a better beer in an hour, um, it's worthwhile. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to put these down for an hour and we'll come back and revisit them. It's an hour later and I have to say the hardest part about this test so far is not drinking this beer, but I've been good. The only thing I've done is taken this one and swirled around a few times to let the oxygen get in there and, and do its thing to see if there really is a taste difference between this beer and the beer that's been sitting in the can protected by the carbon dioxide. However, just to make sure that we have a real baseline and to show you what a nerd I am, I also have a fresh can of Hetty Topper and some beer from that can poured into a Glen Karen glass. Okay, so first things first. Let's taste it from the can. This is the original hour old can. I have to say, everything's still there. The beer's a little bit warmer, but to its credit, there's not really any fusel alcohol flavor or anything like that. It's a very, very well made beer. Um, it's a little bit warmer in the chest now, but other than that, uh, the hot presence is, is still there. It's how I remember it being an hour ago. Uh, so, pretty good. Let's try this one out. Interesting. The hop profile has diminished just a little bit on this beer. Um, it's a little bit sweeter. Uh, the malt is a little bit more present, but for whatever reason, it doesn't have quite the hop kick that the beer in the can has. But maybe I'm just crazy. Let me compare it to the freshly poured one from the, uh, the new can of Hetty Topper. It 
So that one is actually a lot like the can. So I will say John Kimmich is correct that this beer has changed over the hour and the consistency that I experienced from the original beer, which is this, to this has changed dramatically. Now let me just take one sip from the fresh can of Hetty Topper to see how it compares to the hour old can. Uh, the other thing too with this can is I took it out of the fridge at the same time, so it's the same temperature, it's been in the same room, everything, so everything should be just about equal along the, uh, the baseline there. So that it has that, that, that bigger hop wallop uh, that the, the original can had um, an hour ago. It's really imperceptible. So there's been a major change in the beer from fresh to an hour old. Uh, the hop profile has diminished a little bit. The maltiness has come up. It's still a very, very good beer. Uh, and I would say that the two cans are almost identical in flavor, so John is correct that keeping it in the can underneath that layer of carbon dioxide definitely keeps things um, in their place and keeps the, the oxygen from getting in there and changing the drinking experience as you go through the beer over the course of an hour. However, and maybe it's just because I'm a beer geek, but I love drinking a good beer from a glass. I love putting my nose in it, smelling it, and the whole seeing the beer, smelling the beer, interacting with the beer in a glass is a big part of what makes a beer um, a real pleasure for me. So I would say that even though the can protects the beer better, nine times out of ten I'm probably going to reach for the glass, and instead of waiting an hour to drink it, it'll be gone in 15 minutes, and I'm sure I won't even taste the difference.